The family aspect of our company is my brother and myself, and then now we have three sons, gonna, they're in the business, they're gonna be taking over. And we were basically encouraged, or shouldn't say encouraged, I guess we, we inherited this welding deal from our grandfather. He was a piddler, he, he could look at something, and he could make do, he could, he could repair it, did it all himself, his name was Andrew Preps. And we had an uncle, or have an uncle, his name's Weldon, and he was a maintenance guy. Well, at the farm they were always tinkering with something. Well, while we were building our house when we moved here, we lived at the family farm, or our grandparents' farm, and of course you were out and you were tinkering in the, they call it the blacksmith shop, so we was out there messing around. One thing led to another, next thing you know, we're both out there pounding on iron and welding and doing different things. And uh, I was working at a place in Teutopolis called Brooklyn Levy Campus. And uh, we ended up, just got a harebrained idea one day. We thought, you know, we could, we could start a welding shop out here. So my brother and my sister both had horses. We kicked the horses out, built them a different building, and we, sent, we moved into the, the horse barn. And lo and behold, when you know it, we built a trailer in the building. And when it come time to move the trailer, the door wasn't big enough. So we had some buddies come over. We made the door larger. We got the trailer out and we thought, you know, this isn't going to work. We need a bigger building. So there again, the, the neighbor boys come over and fixed us up with a new building. And, and uh, but it's, it's always been kind of a, a running deal, you know, that we've got a picture of the old welder that our, grand, our grandpa had. We've got it sitting in the shop there, you know, in the office, and people come in and says, oh, is that the welder you started with? It's a, pretty much, that's our grandpa, you know, he got us into this, and ever since, the boys, they kind of just, you know, they went to college, did their things, and they all come back, and it's all kind of turned into, I want to be at Higgs's, I want to do this, and uh, after 40 years, we thought we've had enough, we'll let them boys take care of that, but this is our 40th year, very proud of that. Some of our achievements, we've built a tiny house, was on television with that. Uh, we trick your truck, we've been in several magazines stretching trucks and doing different equipment stuff. Uh, we had a 20,000 pound pulling truck, we did the circuit. You know, everybody in the shop, it's not just me and Troy, or the boys, it's everybody in the shop. You know, they all, they all see it and they're like, hey, I had a part of that, or I assisted with this, or whatever, and it, it kind of gives you a, a good, you know, warm feeling inside saying, hey, you know, we did something, you know, people recognize that, you know, and uh, I think it's, uh, you know, kind of special to be recognized on some of that stuff once in a while. So as far as Diedrich and our relationship with them, uh, it's been very good. Um, like I said, we've expanded a lot. We've had a lot of help. The people in the community are, are phenomenal. I mean, you can go to anybody who has a business here they're more than willing to give you information, give you help, give you uh, uh, guidance of maybe, you know, hey, if I was in your shoes, this is what I would do. You know, uh, everybody in the industrial park, very, very uh, accommodating to anybody. You know, I help you, you help me. It's kind of what it's all about, you know. I don't know if that is the same in bigger cities or whatever, if it is, it's great, but around here, you know, you don't even have to think twice. November 25th, 2019. It was the day we officially started the Facebook page for the Wright Family Center. And it really marks the day that we announced publicly. Diedrich is building a daycare, a state-of-the-art gymnasium a state-of-the-art workout facility, community rooms that are gonna allow us to build community together. Well, Diedrich holds what they call mapping sessions, which you may have heard of already, but they're really these community planning sessions where everyone comes together with their ideas on how to make our community better, how to, how to really grow. And we were divided into six groups, and two of those groups were focused, one on daycare and one on recreation. And it really quickly, I think, became apparent that these two groups should work together, that they could capitalize on a shared building, a shared mm -hmm. space. We had two groups come together that night, talk through what they wanted, and the very next meeting, 
probably two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, an individual comes in with the original blueprint. It was just that. They came in, original blueprint, everyone looked at it, rallied around it and said, we're doing this, we are gonna get this done. So we started with the Deidre Community Development Corporation. It's a, it's a great organization here in Diedrich that meets every Wednesday of really just passionate individuals about how do you grow Diedrich? What does that look like? And we asked them. We brought them a business plan. We showed them a P&L and we said, we want this. We know you want a daycare. We know that recs drive and build communities. Let's do this. And in that meeting, they told us they'd donate $100,000. We had our first $100,000 donation but most importantly, I think we had the belief that we were going to do it. Not only did we know financially that we were going to get some backing, but we knew that that's how we were going to start and that we were going to do it. And so we walked away that first meeting with $100,000 and a really crazy idea on how to raise more funds. In that same meeting, they've granted us $100,000 and an individual sitting there says, you know, I once bought a raffle ticket for $100 for a chance to win a house. And we all looked at each other in that meeting. Let's do it. We're in November 2020. We're working through COVID, but we start building a house. Really, this whole thing was built on the back of volunteers. Right, It's been four years since we started this. It was volunteer only, and you couldn't even thank the amount of people in the amount of time we have just to say thank you because so many people were involved. We were really coming in with a good foundation. And then we're awarded a grant from the state of Illinois. We received notification two months prior that we would be getting a $2 million grant for the state of the Illinois. So what went from what I would call a slim down version, slim down version yeah. of the Wright Family Center and what it was going to be without the help of the state just got expanded. We were able to really work the roadway, get the parking lot just mm -hmm. right, expand the size of the building to get it where it needed to be. And it was, a game changer for us. We broke ground September 10th, 2022. And just this week, just this week, guys, <laughs> February 19th, 2024, the center opened. And it's been amazing. We opened our doors this week. We have had so many people in our community purchase memberships. They're using the gym. Kids after school are using the gym every single day. It is amazing to see just the community inside the building that we've been working so hard towards and they have been using it and having so much fun. The park district has been having basketball leagues. Uh, we also have a pickleball league going right now. We have dance classes that we get to offer our community. We also have a beautiful gym that anybody can come work out in. It has truly been so amazing. So our gym, our facility is about 17,000 square foot. We have three community rooms. We can open them up to be one large community room. It's about 1,500 square foot and it is beautiful for anything you need there. We have Everything. Everything. We <laughs> everything, have everything a small town would want in a rec center. Yeah. And we have a daycare. And it's 50-person mm -hmm. daycare, 50-child daycare. It's just, honestly, the entire building is just a blessing to our whole community. Our history with Dietrich goes way back uh, to the beginning of mapping. Uh, the Illinois Institute for Rural Affairs was created in 1989, and then the mapping program, it's a community-driven strategic visioning and planning program, was actually created in 1991. Um, as the Institute started working with rural communities, they could see that 
Uh, they needed to have a plan in place and they needed to engage community residents around community and economic development and so that's how we came about and actually one of the first communities we had the pleasure of working with was Dietrich. Um, so they have been a success story um, from the beginning uh, with that first 1992 mapping program. One of the goals that they identified was to develop a water system and so EJ Water was actually formed um, out of that or developed out of that. They called us back to do a mapping update uh, back in 1996, then again in 1998. Um, I actually was able to do, after the rural information technology planning that we did with them in 2004, back in 2011, when we were called back again to do a, a mapping update program, I was actually program director at that point for the program, so I got to um, take them through the planning process in 2011. Um, and then in 2019, once again, they called us back. And so that's kind of one of the traits of our successful communities is just like a successful business who you know, develops the plan and sees the need to update it on a regular basis. Our rural communities need to do that as well. And so Dietrich recognizes the importance of having an updated community plan. They achieve some of their community goals and then want to revisit what they've accomplished and then how have their goals changed? What, what are their new goals that they want to work on? It was interesting because in this last program, in the 2019 mapping that they did, two of their goals, they had a goal around parks and recreation and a goal around child care. Um, and so it was so interesting. By our last session, the parks and rec team had already had sketch-ups of their proposed community center, which we now know as Wright Community Center. They had already sketched up what it was going to look like, um, and then it was interesting because they were able to kind of combine the parks and recreation and child care goals, you know, into one big uh, project, which is the community center. This community is just full of just hardworking, passionate people. And it's just so neat too that they're just willing to help other communities. I know I'm reaching out to them on a regular basis to connect them with other communities we're working with because they're just a really good example of the great things that can happen when community members come together and work to make their future, their vision a reality. We take volunteerism very seriously here. We even require our high school graduating seniors to have a certain number of volunteer hours before they can graduate. And so it shows the next generation how important that is to us here, to be a part of the community. And everybody has to do their part. So I'm on the board for EJ Water. And EJ Water is a good example of Dietrich because it was somebody in a meeting who said, we can do this. Why can't we do this? So EJ Water was formed and it quickly became one of the biggest water co-ops in the state of Illinois. And people say, well, how did that happen in Dietrich? Well, why not Dietrich? We get a lot of questions like, uh, how, can, how can a town your size raffle off a house? Or how are you the smallest town in the whole country to put a whole machine gun company together in World War I? Or how are you on the list of the top 10 growing towns or fastest growing communities in the state of Illinois? And I like to say, why not Dietrich? Why not? Why not Dietrich? And people don't just show up, but they show up well. They leave their personal agenda at the door. Um, and we realize that community development isn't just the business's business, but it's everybody's business. And it's a task that's never over. We'll be working, always be working on this. We'll always have the next goals we want to accomplish. Um, and people don't just donate money, they donate time. And a lot of people aren't even going to see the benefits of what they've done in their lifetime, but they do it anyway. Whether your kids go to school here or not, whether your address is Dietrich or whatever it is, but um, our definition of community is broad and far-reaching, and we know whatever happens uh, inside the community helps everyone outside the community and vice versa. So I think volunteerism is important in any community, but I think 
I think the attitude of our volunteers is what's important because anybody can volunteer, but to volunteer with the right attitude and the positivity. I always think the positivity story is as important as the volunteerism side of it because we know how important we are to the whole picture. There you have it, 13 stories on Dietrich, Illinois and Dietrich. This is our story, we wrapped it up there with Diane and Heron on the Decatur, Dietrich volunteerism, excuse me there. And you heard about that volunteer spirit that is just so a part of the community and certainly has helped get so many things done, including the brand new Wright Family Center. You saw kind of that planning from the Wright Family Center with one of the stories in that block from Giselle Hamm from the Illinois Institute of Rural Affairs on mapping the future. So again, Kian, there's that intertwinedness of, I don't even know if that's a word, <laughs> but of everything really is linked together in it this is. program. Yes, so many different uh, strings that tie together and it's the yarn and the fabric of Dietrich, Illinois. And they're all here with us tonight and we're celebrating Dietrich. Um, another fun story was uh, Higgs Welding. Brett Higgs, great storyteller. So we're hoping that you're watching wherever you are tonight, Brett, and thanks again for the food and beverages tonight. Pretty cool um, that a, a town this size has something that large and does so many fun things at, at the Higgs Welding. Yeah, they've had success, uh, gotten on TV a little bit with some of the things that they've been able to build, the little houses, some truck stuff. So very cool there. They're located on the west side of Dietrich in the Zambalan Industrial Park. Yeah, and who would have thought they would have raffled a house? But they did, didn't they? And why not Dietrich? Yeah, why not Dietrich? <laughs> for sure, for sure. So once again, we are offering copies of the program to you tonight. Um, a DVD, Blu-ray, or flash drive. It's your choice of media, $75 for one copy. Two or more are $60 each. We've had several people come in and uh, call tonight, and we'll be giving shout-outs here in just a minute. But right now, I am going to talk to the final storyteller of the program tonight. Diane, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. Sure, thanks for having us. So you, you told this story of volunteerism and it's a big deal in Dietrich as we heard so what else do you have to add to talk about um, volunteerism well I think the ultimate example of volunteerism in a small town has got to be the volunteer fire department I've been noticing the last couple of weeks them getting called out at all hours and I just don't think they get thanked enough and every small town has one but they should be thanked in every small town but, yeah, yeah, so this is really the opportunity special. you can yes. look right in that camera and you can thank <laughs> Thank you to the firemen. We, we wouldn't be what we are without you. There you go. Volunteerism safe. at its best, the fire department, and all the other volunteers in Dietrich, Illinois. So your phone's ringing right now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Diane. Ramin, I'm going to throw it over to you. Thank you, Kian. Diane ended the program. Carrie Galbraith started the program with the origin of Dietrich. And you have a family member that goes all the way back the, your great great grandfather yes. was there near the beginning of when Dietrich got going what does that mean to you to be able to share the, the the history going all the way back to the beginning and you have you have a family member that was right there I think the connection um, knowing that your family built this and it's something that each generation has contributed to and it just keeps getting better and better and like you said why not Diedrich and raising our kids there with that connection and knowing that that each generation of their family helped contribute to um, building this and that is is exciting for them so I love history and being able to share the origin of a community is is great and you got that opportunity is there something that you learned in constructing your story that maybe you didn't know about Dietrich? Well, I, I learn all the time. Um, it's kind of my hobby. It was my grandmother's hobby. Um, I learned that the connection, the, all the parts of the story that we told during this episode mm -hmm. um, connected with the history. So telling that history and having that foundation and each generation understanding how that was built upon I think is so important so that they know where and, and why these things came about and why we are what we are today. So you got to start somewhere and thank and you, you for sharing somewhere. the very beginning of Dietrich, Carrie. Thank you very thank much. You. Back to you, Ken. All right. Well, once again, our phone operators are standing by. We have one on the phone right now, but we have three phones available. And this is the last time you're going to have the opportunity to call tonight. So don't wait. If your phone is sitting right there beside you, pick it up, call right now and thank them for sharing Dietrich with the world tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with Kian and our, w, our WEIU team 
on a latest Our Story program. It takes everyone to do it. Lacey Spence is punching the buttons tonight. She also is, is in the editing bay constructing these stories. And it's an absolute joy and pleasure once again to construct our 18th Our Story program. So we thank Dietrich for helping us out. Absolutely. It takes a village and it takes a village here. So we all put this together and we couldn't be more proud of it. And we have some shout outs that we're proud of as well. Keep those phones ringing. We have Jason from Effingham. Congrats, Dietrich, what an honor. Looking forward to receiving my autograph DVD. So thank you, Jason, and we'll we'll see what we can do about that for you. And we have Vicki from Olath, o is that o Olath? O Olatha. Olatha, okay, sorry. Yep. Um, that's the watch party in Kansas, yep. the state of Kansas, and that's Brittany's sister. So thank you so much for watching all the way over in Kansas. Suburb of uh, Kansas City there, near where my grandpa lives. All so right, that's why you knew how to say it. Olatha. <laughs> we also have Diane from Dietrich, Norma from Dietrich, and Mike from Dietrich. Thank you very much for your support of this program. Yes, this has been so much fun. Uh, the phones are ringing, like I said, right now. And you can call in and talk to Carrie Jackson or Carrie Galbraith, or you can talk to, well, you can't talk to Alex or Diane right now because they're on the phone. But if you call, this is your opportunity to give us a phone blitz. You can get all four phones busy tonight. And we would love that because you give us so much energy. You really inspire everybody here and let them know what they have done is important. Speaking of volunteers, Hearing all of the storytellers have been volunteers tonight and um, they want to be here to support Dietrich this is our story and I'll tell you what I'm gonna throw it back over to Ramin because we had a little mishap in the last break and we want to give the man the honor he deserves so Ramin are you let's do it again take two with Donnie Dorn <laughs> Donnie shared a wonderful story about the Veterans Memorial in Dietrich and Donnie as we uh, reemphasize Again, that story block, the, the machine gun company, the Veterans Memorial in Dietrich, mm -hmm. such an important presence in the community is the veterans. Yeah, uh, back when the machine gun uh, company was formed, the community wanted to honor them, so they built a archway as a memorial to the machine gun crew. And then later on, uh, they wanted to honor all the community veterans, so they incorporated the archway into the memorials they have today and they stand behind all the veterans very well and as you described in your story a very beautiful memorial yeah obviously on your shirt i see that you uh, served in vietnam you're a bronze star recipient uh when you see something like that as you described in the story uh that means a lot to you personally to see uh, a wonderful memorial like that in dietrich yes i do uh in fact i uh purchased stones and put every one of the guys that was in my company that was killed in action while I was in Vietnam. And that is how I honor them guys and I go out and see them ever so often. And that is very appreciative. Thank you for your efforts and your service, mm -hmm. sir. Donnie Dorn, back to Kian. All right, we're live over here on this side of the studio. Diane is on the phone, but we have Alex Carrie and Carrie. Oh, Alex is giving a shout out to his daughter. Hi, Della out there. Thanks for watching tonight. Wave to her dad. <laughs> there you go. It's all about family here tonight. And we've got family from Dietrich watching at home, but we've also got them here. Again, a treat to uh, share our latest Our Story program and uh, share a little bit back with us with WEIU. You know, we, uh, we enjoy putting these together. They, they are not a, a free line of work but we enjoy the labor of love. So we appreciate your support of WEIU. So why not WEIU? And we'd love to hear a few more phones from. That's right. You know, we're a small staff here at WEIU. We have about 12 people on staff and we've got a lot of people here with us supporting us from Dietrich tonight. They're all gonna join us here. Come on up everybody from Dietrich. Once again, as we're wrapping up this show, we want you to know that we have been live on Facebook tonight, live on our YouTube channel, and we have been on air, cable, satellite, anywhere you can watch us streaming on our website as well. We have shared Dietrich, Illinois with the world tonight. I forgot to mention this beautiful sign comes from previously being up at the train depot in yeah. Dietrich, so we've been able to literally have history yes. in our WEIU TV studio. Yeah. Well, when you started out the show tonight, you said the WEIU train stopped in Dietrich, That's and it right. really did, and we brought part of it, it with us tonight. It was a pleasure to stop in Dietrich. 
So um, you can still call, you can still order your DVDs, Blu-rays, and flash drives online at weiu.net. We will have them made available to you. So we want to thank you for watching. Dietrich, this is our story tonight. Everybody give everybody a round of applause and a big wave. We're so glad that you tuned in tonight. Thank you. Dietrich, this is our story. Dietrich, This Is Our Story on WEIU is brought to you in part by Founded in 1889, Wright's Furniture and Flooring is a longtime supporter of all things Dietrich. With the philosophy of treating others as we would wish to be treated, Wright's Furniture and Flooring wants to thank all of the champions, volunteers, and storytellers for making Dietrich This Is Our Story possible on WEIU. We are proud to be from Dietrich. Enjoy the show from Wright's Furniture and Flooring. Community is the word to describe Dietrich, an excellent place to live, coupled with a rich history of farming and industry, and now still moving forward. The village of Dietrich, Illinois, is a proud partner of WEIU for Dietrich, This Is Our Story. And thank you to all of our Dietrich storytellers. Niebrugge Lumber, located in Dietrich, just 10 minutes from Interstate 57 and 70. We service all of our surrounding areas, including Effingham, Jasper, Clay, and Shelby counties, and more. We are proud to be a supporter of Dietrich, This Is Our Story on WEIU-TV. Enjoy the show from all of us at Niebrugge Lumber. Dietrich Bank, a community bank with community values. Our employees are your friends and neighbors, which is why they are so passionate about being involved in the neighborhoods and towns they serve. Dietrich Bank salutes the people and the stories involved with Dietrich. This is our story on WEIU. EJ Water is grateful for all the individuals who have helped Dietrich become the thriving community it is today. We are proud to be a part of the community and the surrounding areas we serve. We strive to improve the quality of life the cooperative way, and Dietrich is a part of our foundation which allows us to do so. We hope everyone appreciates the history and enjoys Dietrich. This is our story on WEIU. Dietrich, This is Our Story is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency.